Bill Bradley, you're a senator, a Wall Street banker, and a former New York Nick. So when you title your book, We Can All Do Better, which constituency are you speaking for? Well, I was referring to Lincoln's second State of the Union message. The country's at war. It's not going well for the North. The Emancipation Proclamation is months away. And he sends a message saying, we can only succeed by concert, which means working together. He says, it's not can any of us imagine better, but can we all do better? And when I look out there and see the fragility of our economy and the direction of our foreign policy and the paralysis in our uh, public dialogue, and I look out and I say, you know, can we all do better? And also it's a question for each of us individually. Can we all do better? I mean, you know, can you manage your weight? Can you learn more every day? Uh, can you save enough so you'll have a retirement? Can we all do better? And so the idea was to make the book title reflect what I think has to happen at all levels. Because if we're going to meet our challenges, we have to be at our best as individuals. And yet the fate of individuals depends on the national community. All right, well, let's talk about Washington. Let's we'll start there. Now, in the book, you talk about getting money out of Washington. That's a big theme in the book. How do you do it? You do it with a constitutional amendment. It's because the Supreme Court has ruled that uh, money is speech. You can't limit money without limiting speech. And now that even corporations, since they're people, can't be limited under the law, you have to do a constitutional amendment, which is the way we've done things in the past when we've had problems in our democracy. And it would say simply, the federal, state, and local government may limit the amount of money spent in the political campaign. And then whatever the federal government said was the amount of money spent in a Senate race in New Jersey, a congressional race in Idaho, or whatever, it would be publicly financed. And for about $3 billion a year out of $3.5 trillion, we could totally take special interest out of politics in Washington. You also talk about maybe some structural changes, like a third party or a fourth party. How would you do that? Well, what I'm saying is sometimes, sometimes in American history, uh, points of view have been irreconcilable. The time right before the Civil War occurs to me. But usually it's uh, issues are dis decided by political uh, war. It's vicious, but it's bloodless. And what happens is you either wipe the floor with the other party or you live in a world where parties are relatively balanced and you work as bipartisanship. That was the time I was in the Congress and Senate. That's what we did. But if things are rigidified and you can't deal with the real issues that confront the people in the country, then there could be the emergence of a third party, not a, not a presidential party. It's not Perot, Nader, none of these. It would be a third congressional party that would have a very specific objective, say a specific deficit reduction package, say a specific tax program, say, say specifics in terms of the constitutional amendment or big infrastructure program financed by the Chinese. And you'd go to Washington and you'd say, here are the four things that we stand for. And on every vote, you'd trade your vote to get these things. You could have people say they got to run three, year, three terms, six years. The title could be one Senate term. The slogan could be six years for your country. And if you did that and you were able to trade, you, that third congressional party could very well be the party that changes and breaks this deadlock that exists in Washington today. This market is Stock tickers market. Stocks have rallied this year. We're coming into a Monday where we're going to